Good cold morning. This is HBM's Crypto Corner for Tuesday, February 17th, 2015. Our first article today is about a documentary that was aired on the British Channel Channel 5 back late last year and has just now made its way to YouTube. It's called Bigfoot the Missing Evidence and it featured Dr. Jeff Meldrum. You can see Dr. Meldrum holding up two footprint casts. I have copies of both of those. Both of them show the mid tarsal break. The one in his left hand is from the Blue Mountains in uh, Washington State, and the other is from the Patterson Gimlin film site in 1967. Anyway, it was an interesting documentary. It featured Jeff Meldrum and Dr. Todd Disitel. Uh, Dr. Meldrum had some uh, hairs sent to him, which he sent to Dr. Distail. Dr. Distail had them tested. I won't reveal the results of the testing, but those were the good parts of the show. And also the witness, the eyewitness descriptions. The bad part was they tried to discount the entire Bigfoot legend and all the uh, witness, eyewitness accounts, the footprints and everything like that. Tried to declare that the Patterson-Gimlin film had been proven a hoax, which that was not true, but... This documentary apparently said it was, so I guess it is, right? <laughs> anyway, um, but I give this one about a 7 out of 10. Um, and I think the thing is, it's really not the fault of the producers of this documentary. It's our fault for not really stepping up our game and presenting good evidence. I think good evidence is paramount and should be presented. Regardless of... Uh, what it might be but of course there are always, there's always going to be those who are going to be doubters and this stuff's not made for us it's made for the general public so we got to step up our game to the general public not to each other and not have an echo chamber going on all the time where we're patting each other on the back and uh, saying yeah oh yeah that piece of evidence is great it may be great to us but is it great to the general public you gotta ask yourself that is it going to be acceptable to the general public these are the questions we have to ask ourselves. You know, are we doing something wrong? I would have gotten mad at something like this five years ago, but not now. Because I know it's just TV. Nothing to get upset about. Next article is about uh, some interesting footprints that were found at Lake Wright Patman in Texas recently by Squatch Unlimited and Rob Gaudet of Squatch Unlimited. This will be featured on an upcoming episode of Finding Bigfoot. I'll let you all take a look at the video. And I'm looking forward to seeing this when it comes out. Forty-six inch stride. Forty-seven inch stride. From heel to heel. And looks like it walked out of the water. Got here. What we're thinking is it stopped. Planted. The left heel first, stepped up with its right foot, planted the left heel again, and then took a long step off of its left heel to the moving forward with its right foot. And we'll be right back. The Ohio Bigfoot Conference takes place May 16, 2015 at Salt Fork State Park in Guernsey County, and the fifth speaker has been announced. Professor of English at Charleston Southern University David Floyd. This is in addition to four other speakers, and there may be a sixth speaker announced. Here are the other four speakers announced. John Kirk, 
president of the British Columbia Scientific Cryptozoology Club. Jim Sherman of Michigan BFRO. Cryptozoologist extraordinaire Lauren Coleman. Curator of the International Cryptozoology Museum. And Bob Gimlin of Patterson slash Gimlin film fame. Special guests will include Tom Yamarone. Todd Prescott Mark Meisel B.A. Mills Sharon Lee Walter Tippy J.M. Bailey Tina Harder Winona Alexis NHO Whole School River Gifts Morina M. O. Myers Monica Rollins Paul Halsey Shirley Covington, Montana Candy, Betty and Patrick along Lenny Green Adrian Arnie Joycey Jean Romo Russ Mock Dan and Nicole Law The Squatch Atchison's crew, Jonathan Wilk, Dave McCullough, and Dax Rushlow. Finally, the man, the myth. The legend just kidding, Henry May. Two movies are premiering at the conference as well. Something in the Woods, presented by Mike Hall, which will include the Q and it afterwards. And Small Town Monsters. The Minerva Monster presented by Seth Breedlove and the Fathom Frontiers crew. Gallant McGurgle and Jesse Morgan.
go to www.ohiobigfootconference.com or the Facebook page at www.facebook.com slash pages slash Ohio Bigfoot Conference further details. Hope to see you there. This stuff sucks! I'm tired of mundane, nasty sludge that passes for coffee but tastes more like cat poop? Have we got a solution for you? Sasquatch coffee! With seven flavors of deliciousness. Ape Canyon. Bigfoot Blend. Howl in the Night. Squatch Stomp. Giddy Blend. Yowie Roast. And my personal favorite, Trina. Some flavors also available in decaf. Also, Hot Squatulate. Great gifts are also available. Hoodies. T shirts. Mugs and travel mugs. Remember, that's www.sasquatchcoffee.com. I should say squatchcoffee.com. Tell them HBM's Crypto Corner sent you. There's a new book coming out about Cadborosaurus called Discovering Cadborosaurus by John Kirk and Paul LeBlond. Should be a great one. It's from Hancock House. Hopefully it'll be available on Amazon before too long. But um, apparently from what I understand, John gives some very good scientific ways to search for candy. Much like the ways that you should search for the Sasquatch as well. Um... And uh, this should be a fascinating book once it is released to the general public. I'm looking forward to reading it myself. Again, that's from Hancock House, and hopefully it'll be available from Amazon before too long. Should be a great one, I'm telling you. Especially if you like lake monsters like I do. I do. And finally, we have an interesting article and video from our good friend Thomas Steenberg. He talks about the famous uh, Puyallup, Klamath, and Snohomish screams, which were recorded at various times over the years. Puyallup from 1969 to 1970, um, the, um, the Snohomish back in 1979, and the Klamath from 1993. Thomas and a group of researchers uh, were contacted by some folks living in a trailer home or a trailer park in Chehalis. They went there and they heard the exact sounds. They went and tracked down the source and it turned out to be a coyote, which, according to Thomas, appeared to have invisible hands squeezing it. And it was making these sounds. And then when another coyote came along, they went back to their usual sounds of yip, 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 yip. And they went bounding off into the bush. And Thomas and several other researchers actually saw this. So, could this be an explanation for the Puyallup, Klamath, and Snohomish screams? Perhaps. Although it could also, could also have been just what 
Thomas and his group found. But it is interesting, and perhaps it does solve the mystery of some of these uh, recordings that have uh, been popular through the years. So, and, and Thomas being a very thorough researcher, and being very less credulous and skeptical as hell, that's what the Canadians are. Doesn't mean he's right, but it's interesting anyway. Anyway, that's it for this week. Thanks for tuning in, guys. And until next week, y'all be good or be good at it. This has been HB 